Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. Once again, we will talk about the Operation Allied Force from 1999. This was a NATO air campaign against Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, essentially a leftover country from the previous larger federation, abandoned by four out of six republics. The remaining two republics were now led by Serbia, and you will mostly hear that NATO was fighting against Serbs instead of Yugoslavs. The operation was launched on 24 March 1999. First NATO strikes consisted of two large groups. One of them was US aircraft only and they attacked targets in the north of the country. This group's strikers were stealth aircraft. The southern group consisted of aluminum non-stealth airplanes from various NATO nations. Both groups were protected by F-15Cs providing air cover and F-16CJs primarily tasked with SEAT but also able to engage enemy fighters. Now I have to say that historically the events we are about to cover took place in nighttime. Here we move them slightly ahead to sunset because it's easier for the viewers to see what's going on and because YouTube codec is very unkind to any night footage. Compression can completely ruin a video. I would also like to thank my buddy Alric who helped me with this reenactment. This too would have been difficult with AI only. If you also want to participate in videos, the best way is to join our Discord server just like Alaric has done. Link is in video description. The four aircraft flight of F-15s in charge of the Northern Group was led by Captain Mike Schauer. His personal call sign was Dozer. The F-15s came from the 493rd Fighter Squadron known as the Grim Reapers and operating from Cervia, Italy. Dozer was an experienced Eagle pilot, but the rest of his flight wasn't. His wingman had only about 100 hours on the jets, while number 3 in the formation had about 90 hours. The flight entered Serbian airspace from Hungary and first set up a cap station north of Belgrade, nation's capital. Dozer's first check-in with AWACS was a sign that the operation's planning was far from perfect. The controller asked him, who are you? It seems that this NATO AWACS wasn't well informed about the US-only group coming in from the north. Dozer's flight was now separated into two groups of two F-15s, each on its own station. Due to shortage of AMRAM missiles, some aircraft had a mix of AMRAMs, Sparrows and Sidewinders. Dozer's aircraft was one of them, carrying two AIM-7MH missiles on the front fuselage positions, two MRAMs in the rear, plus two more MRAMs and two AIM-9Ms on the wings. Since F-15 pilots had no night vision goggles, they flew in trail formation, with the wingman about five miles behind, following his leader using radar, TACAN and IFF interrogator. At one point, Dozer detected a contact about 35 miles to the south, at about 1500 feet and 150 knots. He had no ID from his onboard system, nor from the AWACS. This contact was in fact a Serbian MiG-29 taking off from Batajnica Air Base near Belgrade. The man in the cockpit was Major Neboša Nikolic. Earlier we mentioned that the F-15 pilots in Dozer's flight were mostly inexperienced. Serbian pilots who took off to face NATO aircraft were relatively experienced but due to factors such as international weapons embargo and economic sanctions they didn't have a chance to maintain their flying skills. An average Serbian fighter pilot flew less than 10 hours per year. Their aircraft weren't properly maintained either, 
making the equipment very unreliable. Those that took off experienced failures of radars, navigation, radar warning receivers, and so on. Major Nikolic took off and headed north. According to his testimony, he attempted to establish communication with his GCI control, but received no answer. He noticed that his navigation wasn't working, and apparently neither was the radar. We are back with Captain Mike Dozer Shower. After detecting the MiG-29 taking off, but having no ID, he put his radar back to search mode and realized the MiG was moving north towards him. Dozer locked him up again. The MiG was now at 10,000 feet. What Dozer didn't know was that his own radio was jamming itself and most of his communication wasn't heard by anyone. When the MiG was at about 17 miles, Dozer got the target ID, which gave him launch clearance according to rules of engagement. He launched an MRAM at about 14 miles. Soon after that, he switched to Sparrow and launched that missile too. Partly because double launches increased the probability of kill, and partly because he had always wanted to launch a Sparrow. As both missiles counted down to zero, Dozer realized that they had missed. One of the reasons for the misses was the mix evasive B maneuver. Nikolic turned right. Dozer was still diving from a much higher altitude, and now at about 20,000 feet and 5.5 and miles of distance, he launched a second MRAM. At that moment, the MiG turned left and started to climb towards the F-15. At the moment of explosion, the F-15 was almost on top of the MiG. Dozer is quite critical of himself and admits that instead of going to auto guns and clearing the area for other threats, he was just watching the MiG go down. The missile apparently didn't score a direct hit, but it nevertheless started a fire, which eventually forced Nikolic to eject. His testimony doesn't match the reports from the American sources in all details. Mostly in the number of aircraft he was fighting against and in the number of missiles launched at him. According to Serbian sources, Nikolic was alone against 24 NATO fighters and up to 6 missiles were fired at him. A 
according to Dozer's testimony, there were only four F-15s and four F-16s in the area at that moment. Nikolic also claims that another missile hit his aircraft immediately after his ejection. The only way to match this with what Dozer described is if one of the first two missiles damaged the MiG, and then the third one hit directly after the ejection. One thing that neither Dozer nor Nikolic was aware of was that there was an F-117 Nighthawk in the middle of their engagement. They couldn't detect it, but the pilot was watching Dozer's missiles and then Dozer's aircraft fly right above his head using his night vision goggles. Dozer and his wingman returned to their cap station and then detected another MiG-29 taking off from Batanitsa. This time, Dozer couldn't get an ID. Due to his faulty radio, AWACS and his flight members couldn't hear him. The F-15 and the MiG were going nose to nose and Dozer soon got on top of it. He was sure this was a hostile aircraft, but he couldn't shoot. His number 3 locked up the MiG, but got a friendly ID. One of the F-16 pilots also locked up the MiG, but in the heat of the battle, he forgot to get an electronic ID. He asked Dozer to confirm, but he got no reply, again due to broken radio. Now, all eight NATO aircraft had to escape from a single MiG because neither of them could get an ID to satisfy the rules of engagement and shoot at it. Dozer and his wingman now headed south to investigate another MiG-29 reported by AWACS, but they couldn't find anything. This was apparently a false contact, and such things would often repeat during Operation Ally Force. Other American pilots were able to put some distance between them and the MiG, and they turned to reacquire it. Now one of the F-16 pilots called Dozer on the radio and told him to turn north. He turned and immediately detected a contact at 16 miles with a hostile ID. AWACS reported a friendly contact at 27,000 feet. Dozer was at 37,000 feet, so he decided to dive in order to get below 27. As he approached the contact at 5 miles, he was at 19,000 feet, and the contact was well below him. Being sure that this wasn't what the AWACS had called, Dozer launched an MRAM. He's again critical of himself, saying that he should have launched too. He also forgot to crank, which would have given him an opportunity to continue his intercept. Dozer was now in the right turn, 
The make had just passed under him, and he observed a small pop, but no large explosion. The Emirate apparently missed, so those are called for a 360 turn. His wingman who was behind him didn't hear that, but he heard the next instruction to turn north, which he obeyed. However, in his inexperience, he didn't report that he had the MiG-29 locked all the time without ID confirmation. Had those who known this, he would have ordered him to shoot, having ID the MiG himself. They both came back to their cap station and once again acquired the MiG on their radars. AWACS kept declaring it friendly and the Eagle pilots tracked it as it descended and landed. The second MiG pilot was Major Lubisha Kowachi. Unlike most Serbian pilots who took off to fight NATO aircraft, there doesn't seem to be his testimony available anywhere in the media. What is reported is that his radar wasn't functional and he was unable to acquire any targets. He couldn't land back to Batajnica Air Base because of smoke, so he landed on Belgrade International Airport instead. The first night of the campaign ended with three Serbian MiG-29s shot down. Apart from Mike Dozer's shower, the second one was downed by Cesar Rico Rodriguez over Kosovo. The third one is credited to Dutch pilot Peter Tanking, but that one might have been shot down by a friendly SAM system. While it's generally known that Serbian aircraft suffer from equipment failures, NATO aircraft were not immune from this problem either. Had Dozer's radio functioned properly, Another MiG might have been downed. I hope you liked the video. Be sure to press the like button if you did. Join our Discord server, support the channel on Patreon, and keep watching Showtime 112.